Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and this is Harriet and welcome back to Educating Adventures. My friend Harriet is a small, very cute type of lizard known as a bearded dragon. And as much as I would love to spend today talking about bearded dragons, we are going to be talking about a lizard that's quite a bit bigger than Harriet. Today we are going to be learning about the heaviest lizard in the world, the Komodo dragon. Let's get started. As we already mentioned, Komodo dragons are the heaviest lizard in the world. Males are usually larger than females and they average about 150 pounds, but they can grow much larger than that. Now have no fear, you will not see a Komodo dragon walking around in your neighborhood because Komodo dragons are only found in savannas and forests on five tiny little islands off the coast of southeastern Asia. One of those islands is called Komodo Island, which is how the Komodo dragon got its name, and most wild Komodo dragons can be found in Komodo National Park. Komodo dragons are one of about 80 species of monitor lizards. And this is a genus of lizards, which means they're really closely related. And because they're closely related, they have a lot in common. In fact, well, like most reptiles, monitor lizards are cold-blooded or ectothermic, which means they cannot regulate their own body temperature. They have to rely on their environment to warm up or cool down. Also like most reptiles, monitor lizards lay eggs and they usually lay their eggs in a hole underground. Now something kind of special about monitor lizards, they're not afraid of water and many of them are really good swimmers. In fact, one species of monitor lizard is even named after its habit of hanging out in water. It's the water monitor. Monitor lizards are primarily carnivorous, meaning they are meat eaters. Although some scientists think that Komodo dragons have a bit of an advantage. Some scientists think that Komodo dragons are venomous. Now, I want to be sure to say scientists do not agree on this. Some scientists say Komodo dragons are venomous. Some scientists say all monitor lizards are venomous, and some say none of them are venomous. So there is a lot of debate among scientists about whether Komodo dragons are truly venomous or not. What we do know is after a Komodo dragon bites their prey, they usually don't live very long. Komodo dragons eat animals like giant water buffalo. They can also eat pigs and deer they also like to eat meat that's already dead, and they'll even eat other Komodo dragons. Hmm. So usually what happens is after a Komodo dragon bites their prey, they follow it and they wait for it to die. And while they're following it, they use their incredible sense of smell to keep track of it. Just like snakes, Komodo dragons have a long forked tongue that they can use to pick up smell particles to help them figure out where their prey is going. Young Komodo dragons usually hang out up in the trees. They're avoiding the bigger Komodo dragons, but oftentimes our larger Komodo dragons, they all smell the same food. And oftentimes they'll end up at the same spot, all hoping to get a piece of that meal. However, the bigger, stronger, more dominant Komodo dragons, they get to eat first. And so oftentimes Komodo dragons will fight to figure out who is dominant. They'll use their big, powerful tails, they'll use their sharp claws, and the winner of the fight gets to eat first. Now, this is one of the challenges about living on an island. All of the resources are finite, which means there's only so much of them. So the bigger, stronger Komodo dragon who gets to eat first, they can eat 80% of their body weight in one meal. That means a 150 pound Komodo dragon 
could weigh about 250 pounds when it's got a full belly. The loser of the fight gets whatever scraps are left over or has to go find their food somewhere else. Komodo dragons that are displaced by the larger Komodo dragons, they usually have to go somewhere else for new territory or new food. But lucky for them, Komodo dragons are pretty fast. They can run more than 10 miles per hour. And remember, we said they're good swimmers, so they can cross rivers. They can also swim along the coastline to reach new places. Some of the places that Komodo dragons inhabit are also inhabited by people. And the places where Komodo dragons can live are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. However, Komodo National Park is a safe haven for Komodo dragons. They're protected in that area. So we can actually help Komodo dragons. There's only about 3,000 of them left in the wild. We can help Komodo dragons by making donations to Komodo National Park. We can also help our local wildlife by visiting and supporting our local national parks wherever you might live. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for joining me to learn about Komodo dragons today. If you would like to test your knowledge or if you would like to do activities or projects about Komodo dragons, be sure to click the link in our description below and I hope we see you next time at our next educating adventure.